The runway and taxiway complex here at Moravan is quite unique. It's a very complex layout. There's five runways and a huge network of taxiways and quite a large apron area. So for Class D aerodromes around Australia, Moravan is probably the most complex one we have in this country. Therefore, it lends itself, unfortunately, to conditions conducive to inadvertently having a runway incursion. That is, taxiing onto a runway without the required authorization from air traffic control. Luckily, there are some things that pilots can do to assist themselves. The first thing a pilot can do is to make sure they plan the, the taxiing or the ground component of their flight uh, exactly the, how they would plan or research the airborne component of their flight. One of the best ways of doing this is from a, a lot of the products that we here at CASA produce to assist pilots in this regard. Traditionally around the place we do see a lot of pilots taxiing way too fast. An aircraft taxiing too fast takes longer to stop, your situational awareness has to be that much greater and it can be distracting taxiing too fast. One of the best things that pilots can do is to make sure they keep their head outside the cockpit at all times, either on runways or on the taxiway complex itself. The time for running through checklists, the time for fiddling with things like iPads or GPS units is while the aircraft is stationary and preferably in the run-up bay when you're out of the way of other aircraft. Even little things like keeping the windscreen clear and clean of obstructions and, and dirt etc and grime on the windscreen, that can assist visibility outside the cockpit immensely. Here at Moorabbin, the runway complex is to the east of the parking areas, so late in the afternoon when taxiing off the runway complex, you're looking into the westerly setting sun. If you have a dirty windscreen, it can reduce your visibility quite remarkably. Moorabbin has recently undergone some changes with the ground taxiing areas that are available simply to try and reduce the amount of runway incursions that we have. So we have actually closed taxiway Alpha 2 between runway 17 right and Foxtrot taxiway. Now if you're flying into Moorabbin at night it was a lit taxiway and it will no longer be there. So you may need to roll all the way through to the end but that's not a big deal. You just let us know and we'll make sure that you have enough space. With the not so recent changes to Metro D, you now need to get a clearance to enter a runway that is not in use. So whilst it may not be nominated on the ATIS as a runway, you need to get permission to enter it. From Tower Tango for Juliet, it's ready, three, five, right, departure, upwind. For Juliet, hold position. Hold position, Tango for Juliet. So if you're landing on a runway and you want to vacate onto a runway, there's no problem with that. Again, you just need clearance. So just ask the tower, can I use the runway to my left? And we will approve it. If you're unfamiliar with Moorabbin and you call us inbound and let us know that you've never been here before, we may actually overfly you. This is to give you an overhead view of the runway and taxiway system so that you can orientate yourself and see what's going on. That way the circuits will be underneath you, you'll see the circuit direction and it will help to give you an idea of the direction that we're going and the way that the pilots are operating. So be aware that if you do come in we may overfly you just to give you a better view of what's going on. With the two sets of parallel runways at Moorabbin, 1.3 and 1.7, it is very easy from the air to get them confused. So 1.7 is the most used runway here at Moorabbin. So just be careful when you turn on to final to make sure that you've got the correct runway. What's your compass say? Does it say 1.3.0 or is it closer to 1.7? And just have a quick look at the numbers that are painted on the runway to make sure that you are on the correct one. You only concern yourself with the runway that you're going to use on that particular landing. You haven't got to be worrying about all the other runways and taxiways. And once you get on the ground, it isn't that complicated to get off the runway with a bit of guidance from the tower to the uh, apron area. Getting out to the runways is not a major issue. There are usually people proceed to a holding bay as they're leaving their particular point, And there's no clearance required for most people to taxi into the holding bay. Once you're in the holding bay and you've got yourself orientated, you know what runway is in operation and you've got a runway guide. All the aircraft normally are fitted with runway guides and uh, you can then get your taxi clearance to the runway that you want to go to. Landing at the airport, uh, once you've uh, landed, again, you taxi clear of the runway via a taxiway, not a runway. Unless a clearance has been given, you can't enter a runway even if it's a, a non-operational runway. And once you're clear of the runway, you can stop get your guide out again. The taxiways are all marked with letters. They're big letters, so you can see them quite clearly. Even if you don't see that letter and you're on a taxiway, you can just tell them that you're clear of the runway and request taxi to the apron. 